പോസ്റ്റ് സിനോഡൽ സെർക്കുല ജാനുവരി ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി ടു ജോർജ് കാർഡിനൽ ആലഞ്ചേരി ദ മേജർ ആർച്ച് ബിഷപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദി സിറോ മലബാർ ചർച്ച് ടു ദി ആർച്ച് ബിഷപ്സ് ബിഷപ്സ് പ്രീസ്റ്റ് കോൺസെക്രേറ്റഡ് മെൻ ആൻഡ് വിമൻ ആൻഡ് ലേ ഫെയ്ത്ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ദി സിറോ മലബാർ ചർച്ച് മേ ദി ഗ്രേസ് ഓഫ് ദി ലോഡ് ബി വിത്ത് യു ഓൾ ദിയർ ബ്രദേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് സിസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് യു ഹാവ് നോൺ ബൈ ദിസ് ടൈം ദാറ്റ് ദി ഫേസ്റ്റ് സെഷൻ of the 30th synod of the Siramalaba church was held from January 7 to 15 2022 at the Archiepiscopal Curia Mount St Thomas Kakanad I thank the Lord for giving us grace to hold in physical presence the synodal meeting which was held online in the last 2 years on account of the difficulties created by the covid The Synod Fathers began the meeting after thanking the Lord in prayer for having guided the church peacefully in spite of great obstacles. I convey the gratitude of the Synod Fathers to the faithful for their support for the Synod through their prayers and penance. The Universal Church is preparing at this time for the Synod of 2023 through their collaborative studies on the importance of communion and sharing and missionary duties of every one of faithful the discussions in our synod also took place based on the thoughts of the holy father pope francis the 1950th anniversary of the martyrdom of saint thomas the apostle we are celebrating this year the 1950th anniversary of the martyrdom of saint thomas the apostle the synod is appealing to all the faithful to celebrate this anniversary solemnly on July 3rd 2022 the strength of the church comes from the faith we receive from st thomas the apostle we are also entering the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the siro malabar hierarchy in 1923 we shall thank the lord for giving us the grace to continue this apostolic tradition for the last 20 centuries This is a year in which Christians and their institutions in India experienced the great number of persecutions. The fathers of the synod prayerfully acknowledge the sacrifices suffered by the children of God like St Thomas the apostle who underwent martyrdom for his faith. The synod is requesting the authorities to take drastic actions to stop such brutal attacks against Christians. that are increasing in their tempo devasahayam pilla the martyr pope francis is canonizing devasahayam pilla the first martyr from india on may 15 he is a great model for those who face obstacles in the practice of their faith we shall praise the lord who is blessing the church in india with this great and holy saint evangelization the 1950th anniversary of the martyrdom of St Thomas the Apostle is a golden opportunity to strengthen the spirit of evangelization the responsibility of the church which is missionary by its nature is to convey the news of salvation given through Jesus Christ to everyone in the human race our missionaries who sacrifice their lives to witness to Jesus Christ in difficult circumstances are the pride of the church it is through them that the holy spirit conveys the news of the salvation to the ends of the earth hence in the seminary training right from the beginning a program to develop the interest of the candidates in evangelization will be introduced hindi the national language will be taught in our seminaries evangelization consists in the proclamation of the truth that one has to bear witness to jesus who is a sole savior the church views with respect the various lay organizations which are working with great exemplary missionary zeal the church is promising its full support to their endeavors the church views as evangelization the endeavors that are focused on creating a fraternal society and on promoting living in unity with believers in other religions in order to dispel the darkness of communalism that is increasing in the society we have to proclaim the gospel to all human beings who as the children of god 
our brothers and sisters. The basis of our evangelization is our conviction that the solution of all our problems is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. In all our efforts, whether they are in the field of education, healthcare, charitable endeavors, or the betterment of the lives of the marginalized, what guides the church is a commitment to the gospel. We shall be active sharers in the evangelization ministry of the church with the conviction that every baptized person has a missionary role to play. COVID crisis. For the last two years, we have been confronting the disastrous consequences of the COVID at a global level. Now, a variant of the COVID has emerged as Omicron. We have to survey the spirit of crisis by trusting in the providence of God and following the instructions of the government agencies. We were practicing our religious traditions online during these critical times. But we have to move forward to participate in our sacramental life physically when we overcome these difficult times. We have to pay special attention to helping those who find it difficult to live on account of the COVID. We shall overcome the hardships of these days through faith, love, and hope. We shall overcome the hardships of these days through faith, love, and hope. The Kasturidangan report and the anxieties of farmers. The Senate is requesting the central and state governments to pay serious attention to the issues concerning the farmers in the high ranges. It is sad that many reports that deal with the issues are prepared in a prejudiced way against the farmers who are extremely careful to preserve the ecological nature of their environment. The church always views with great respect ecological issues, treating them on a par with the values of the gospel. The bishops and a few experts in the field have met the central ministers of environment and forestry, as well as the chief minister of Kerala, to apprise them of the anxieties of the farmers. The demands of the farmers are the following. Protected forest and world heritage centers alone are to be declared as ESA zones. Farmlands and places where a hundred or more people live in a square kilometer are to be excluded from the ESA limits. The list that the government of Kerala submitted to the central government in 2018 is unscientific and is against the interest of the farmers. Since the central government has extended the time limits to six months more, the government of Kerala has adequate time to prepare a new map of environmentally sensitive zones to submit to the central ministry of the environment. The backwardness of Christians. Generally, the Siro Malabar community was considered to be an advanced community financially and educationally. But our research into the situation of the community that was done to give a report to Justice B. Koshi Commission should be an eye-opener. It is alarming to note that the population of our community is decreasing fast. We are failing behind in many areas where we were in the front line in the past. A large percentage of our people live in houses that have only very limited conveniences. 50% of our families have only less than 10 cents of property. 30% of the rest have only property less than 50 cents. 34% of the families in our community share property bordering forest or are encountering the attacks of the wildlife along with other communities. Also, the diminishing returns in the agricultural sector have impoverished our community. Our representation in government jobs is becoming limited. Almost 45% of the community is in debt crisis. Our community is experiencing a great unemployment rate. Any diocese abroad which wants to conduct similar surveys can get help from the church bodies here. We expect immediate interventions from the government and to take a serious view of the backwardness of the community. We have to bring into the mainstream our community, which is sliding into backwardness on all fronts, from the parish to the diocesan level. The Public Affairs Commission is interested with the task of devising 
definite action programs to overcome deficiencies in these areas. Uniform mode of celebration of the Holy Kurbana. The Synod of 2021 August decided to implement the uniform mode of celebration of the Eucharist in all dioceses of the Syro Malabar Church as per the direction of Holy Father Pope Francis and of the Oriental Congregation. It is a matter of great satisfaction that the implementation of the uniform mode of Eucharistic celebration was done from November 28, 2021 of the Mangalavarta Kalam in 34 di dioceses out of 35. We shall thank the infinite mercy of God which led the whole church to a sense of unity. The fathers of the sinner do acknowledge with great gratitude the sacrifices undertaken by many of the clergy, the religious and the laity to move from the way of the celebration to which they were accustomed for a great number of years to the new mode, taking into account the common good of the church. The fathers of the synod feel grieved at the way some of the representatives of the Archdiocese of Ernagulam Ankamali indulge in acts that violate the discipline of the church to show their displeasure in making a move from their decades-long tradition of offering the Eucharist facing the people. The other dioceses which have taken the paths of reconciliation respecting the government good and fellowship are models to be followed. The team from the Ernagulam Ankamali Archdiocese under the leadership of the Metropolitan Vicar Mar Antony Kariel met the Holy See with a view to getting the dispensation by Canon number 1538 from the Synod's decision of the uniform mode of celebration. The dispensation that was given to the whole diocese as per Canon 1538 on November 27, 2021 is not canonically valid and hence has to be corrected. This was intimated to the Metropolitan Vigar by Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, the prefect for the Congregation for the Oriental Churches through his letters on December 7, 2021 and January 7, 2022. The Metropolitan Vigar has intimated the Synod that he would issue a new circular on January 23, 2022, implementing the uniform mode of Eucharistic celebration as requested by the Synod at the request by the Holy See. It is inevitable for a Catholic according to the Catholic tradition, to obey the decision of the Holy See. It is worth remembering that no individual or diocese has the freedom to take exception to the decision of the Synod in liturgical matters according to CCEO 152. The fathers of the Synod are asking all the priests, the religious and the laity to use the uniform mode of celebration of the Eucharist as directed by the Holy See and the Senate, rejecting all recalcitrant objections nurtured by ill will and false pretenses. The Senate hopes that all will be ready for such a reconciliation considering the good of the Church and its communion. All have to be careful not to fall into traps of the enemies of the Church who try to transform differences of opinion into street battles. The concerned vigors of parishes have to make suitable arrangements for the bishops of the Syro Malabar Church who are committed to the synodal form of the Eucharistic celebration to celebrate the Holy Mass in whichever church they visit for such a purpose. We have to remember that the Church is not only a human institution but also the mystical body of Christ. The will of the Holy Spirit is revealed through the decision of the Synod. The fact the decision of the Synod was accepted in most of the dioceses, taking into account the unity of the Church is indicative of the presence of the divine will. Let not people be misled by the false propaganda that the new mode of celebration of the Eucharist would involve the stoppage of the recitation of rosaries, the banning of novenas, or statues in churches or of celebration of the feast of the church. Appointments The Synod elected Mar Joseph Pamplany, the present auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Telichiri, as its archbishop. The Synod very respectfully acknowledges 
the very exemplary administration of the archdiocese by the present archbishop mar george narakelat mar peter kuchipurakel was elected to be the bishop of palghat in the vacancy created by the retirement of mar jacob mantodath who guided the diocese for the last 25 years with great administrative skill and diligence i wish all the blessings of god to the new bishops who are taking charge and to the retiring bishops recognition the synod decided to give the award of malpan to father michael karimattam a priest of the archdiocese of telicheri and a great bible scholar who made the bible study very popular may we be guided by the intercession of the blessed virgin mary of saint thomas the apostle and of all the saints and the blessed of the church may the grace of the merciful lord be with you always given this from the major archiepiscopal curia of the sira malabar church at mount saint thomas kakanar on 15 january 2022 cardinal george alanjeri major archbishop of the sira malabar church note the circular shall be read in all the parishes and institutions of sira malabar church during the holy kurbana on sunday 30th january 2022 